Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Daniel White the Third, with the Second Coming Watch update. This is update number 572, and let's take a quick look at today's prophecy-related headlines, which point towards the Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. First, today, under the sign category of distress among nations, according to Reuters, the United States plans to station around 150 tanks and armored vehicles in Europe for use by U.S. forces training there by the end of this year. Lieutenant General Ben Hodges, commander of the U.S. Army in Europe, said some of the tanks and vehicles enough to equip an armored brigade could be placed in Poland, Romania, or the Baltic states. A U.S. armored unit was already in the pipeline to go to Europe earlier in 2014 when it was needed as part of U.S. measures to reassure Eastern European allies in response to the Ukraine crisis. Uh, Hodges said he expected the U.S. measures, which include an expanded exercise program, to go on throughout 2015 and into 2016. Second, today under the sign category of the turmoil in Israel and the Middle East, according to Reuters, The United States on Tuesday imposed sanctions on nine new targets, saying the entities and people targeted had supported Iran's efforts to avoid sanctions and backed the government's human rights abuses, including censorship. U.S. Treasury Department officials uh, said in a statement that the latest move was part of an effort to enforce existing sanctions while the United States and other countries continue to negotiate with Iran over its nuclear program. Third, today under the sign category of the turmoil in Israel and the Middle East, according to the Jerusalem Post, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas signed 20 international agreements on New Year's Eve, including the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, paving the way for criminal charges against Israel for alleged war crimes committed in Palestinian lands. The Obama administration stood strongly opposed to what it called an entirely counterproductive move taken by the Palestinian Authority toward membership at the International Criminal Court. Jeff Rothke, director of the Office of Press Relations at the State Department, said in a statement, it is an escalatory step that will not achieve any of the outcomes most Palestinians have long hoped to see for their people. Fourth, today, under the sign category of earthquakes in diverse places, according to Sputnik International, a 5.3 magnitude earthquake has hit Iran's southern Bashur province near the country's nuclear power plant. The earthquake hit the town of Shanbe, where it damaged several buildings but no information on casualties was available. Fifth today, under the sign category of signs in the heavens, according to Fox News, people along the East Coast reported seeing a bright fireball in the skies on Monday evening at about 6.35 p.m. The American Meteor Society says it received more than 330 reports. The fireball was seen from Montreal, Canada, to Maryland and Delaware 
One person in New Hampshire reported seeing flames. You can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy related news at secondcomingherald.com. The prophetic passage of scripture we are looking at today is Exodus chapter 19 verses 7 and 8 which reads, And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Allow me to share with you more commentary on this passage from the popular Bible prophecy commentary edited by Dr. Tim LaHaye and by Dr. Ed Heinsohn. And they go on to say, there are 12 reasons the new covenant is a superior and final replacement for the Mosaic covenant. Paul provides the first seven reasons. Number one, the Messiah is the goal and completion of the Torah. Number two, believers are now under grace, not the Torah. Number three, believers no longer need a tutor to reveal our innate terminal sinful condition. That tutor, the law prescribed that the only antidote and cure to our terminal state is the Messiah. Number four, we who are alive in Christ are necessarily released from the Torah. We were once married, but after a spouse dies, we are free to remarry. We are released from the law and alive in, Mas in Messiah. Number five, the law of Christ, our freedom within the new covenant, provides liberty and lifestyle for the purpose of winning others. Number six, the Mosaic law has been nailed to the cross in comparison to the new covenant. Paul labeled the Torah the ministry of death. The new covenant is a ministry of life. Number seven, the Mosaic law was abolished for the purpose of uniting Jewish and Gentile uh, believers together in Messiah. Number eight, implicit in the very fact of the new covenant's being promised to Israel is the inferiority of the old covenant. It is designed to replace as well as the fact that the old covenant's days are numbered and limited. The deficiencies of the Mosaic Covenant are addressed within the very fabric of the New Covenant. Number nine, Jesus came to fulfill the Torah through his perfect obedience, even to the point of death. Number ten, Peter labels the Mosaic Law a yoke that Jews cannot bear. Number eleven, the key argument of the author of Hebrews is that with a new and improved permanent priesthood necessarily comes a new and improved permanent law, yielding a new and improved permanent hope by which to relate to God, who provides a permanent guarantee of a new and improved permanent covenant based upon new and improved promises. Number 12, two millennia ago, the author of Hebrews wrote, that the Mosaic Covenant was obsolete, old and disappearing. That which was on the verge of disappearing two millennia ago is now completely replaced by a superior covenant. And dear friend, if the Lord tarries his coming and we live, we will continue looking at the prophetic passages of the Bible in our next broadcast slash podcast. Our second coming quote for today is from G. Campbell Morgan. He said, I never begin my work in the morning without thinking that perhaps he may interrupt my work and begin his own. I am not looking for death. I am looking for him. Now, dear friend, if you are not ready for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, May I encourage you to get ready today by trusting him as your Savior. Uh, please acknowledge that you are a sinner, uh, that you have broken God's laws, uh, just as I have, and that you need a Savior. 
so that you will not have to spend eternity in a place called hell. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul and he will save you. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's a guarantee. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator when he prayed, Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you.